Gonna get a lot of dough. Anything is possible. Turn me up in the headphone. Yeah. Trying to get a lot of dough and dirt the water obstacles, cause anything is possible. Yeah. Oh man, I got a lot of gold. Stack that bread and buy my nose. Anything is possible. Yeah. What up, what up, what up, what up? Welcome back, everybody. It's your favorite podcast. I'm a pastor, not a doctor, and your favorite co-host, Cuff Daddy, and my co-host, the American Pharaoh. <laughs> We're back at it again, just messing around, and we, you might actually learn something today because we have a cool guest on. Uh, speaking of cool guests, though, dude, did you lose a little weight? You look like a little thinner in the face. Um, my kids have you been mew? teaching me how to, to mew. mew? <laughs> You've been mewing. Does that yeah. work? Yeah. So if you mew, you know, you really define that jawline. So I know what mewing is, but you got to tell the, the audience because they're probably like, what the hell are they talking about? Well, they can what watch is, what is mewing? now. So now you can see it, but mewing, you're really trying to define that jawline. And so you kind of like bring that jaw forward and then you you actually it's like point to it to show it's like it. the zoolander it's like, like a zoolander you have to, you have, to have to like purse the lips uh so it's almost duck face and then <laughs> and the way you do it you run it down and then you go and then you almost like tell them to shh. what and is that does do it the strengthen the masseter muscle does it strengthen the masseter know, muscle but, or something? Shit's, but, but look at me i look amazing shit's working <laughs> <laughs> it's probably your diet aren't you on a diet oh, or something I, yeah i got rid of all the shit that makes me feel terrible after uh, figuring out what that was so uh i did broccoli. like a six week yeah broccoli's bad for me egg whites which is crazy because everyone's like egg yolks i'm like no that's third on my list but like don't ever eat is egg whites and then <laughs> like there's some there's casein which is in dairy so dairy's not that's great right. for me uh, monk fruit, which was a, it's in a lot of sweeteners. So I pretty much oh, cut sugar out. Good. I know, food. but I can't have it. It's no, no bueno for, for Sharif. So, uh, I've cut out a lot of the stuff that I am not, my body doesn't like, and I'll tell you what, I feel great and I'm back to working out. And so high protein diet, very low carb, no sugar, very, very little booze, unless there's a reason to like maybe shoulder 360 or something like that. So I'm, I'm trying to get healthy. I'm getting old. And that's good. It's funny that, you know, you say that cause you know, I'm plant-based and, and it works for me. So I don't really like push like, Oh, you can't eat meat to other people. Uh, I just, it seemed to work for me. And I went through these phases of like eating this, I don't eat that I'm gluten-free. I'm this and that. And like, you know, the plant-based thing kind of works for me and I'm still able to get enough protein and work out. But it's interesting that like some of the things that I think are healthy and make me feel good, you, it doesn't feel good for you, right? So it's right. kind of like a trial and error thing. Right. And I think that's where, I think with diets, we have to be careful. It's because people will say, well, you can't do this. You can't do that. You need this. You don't need that. I, I think each person needs to figure it out for themselves by doing certain types of tests. And I think as we get even dirtier in the way we look at things and maybe certain people you can break it down to what minerals they need you know and it, it it you can essentially figure out what fuel you need and that's what's crazy it's and we all take different fuel and if you're having fuel that you think is healthy and it's not then that's not great then it's no but no different than just eating terrible so i i think if you're really interested in trying to figure out what's best for you just do a test because it's very simple to find out what's good for you and what's bad for you. If it feels good, I do it. So that's how I know it's good. I, I couldn't agree more. It's, it's, it's words I've lived by for about 50 years. Yeah. No, but so for me, I just, you know, I do a lot of the natural products, right? I do different kinds of mushrooms and, and adaptogens and, and aminos. And, you know, I do, I do supplements, right? So none of these mm -hmm. things are like FDA approved. So it's kind of like, 
it's fun for me to try to learn about these natural foods and natural products and kind of learn like the health benefits of different types of foods, like chia seeds, for example, it's supposed to be really good for your colon, right? Because it absorbs water. So it'll take in all that water and kind of cleanse your colon out, you know, and it tastes good. So I try to like incorporate some of these things in my diet. But you know, I like kombucha, for example, we, I think we talked about that in a different episode, like, that doesn't make me feel good. It makes me gassy. So then I looked it up and, and there's some literature on kombucha to show that there's actually really no health benefit and you're at risk of having like liver toxicity because of the fermentation. So I'm like, huh, that's interesting. I'm not going to fuck with it. So, but you know, other people swear by it, right? right. I, I mean, mean and that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. It's like, you, we just don't know until you know for yourself. And I, like you said, could I go plant-based tomorrow? Probably. It's just, I enjoy meat, but at the same time, I don't enjoy meat every day. I, I think that, you know, there's this whole new, you know, caveman diet that's out and it's just like beat something on the head and eat it and that's it. And it's like, I, I don't know if that's the right answer. I think everything is in moderation and mm -hmm. you just got to figure it out. You can the pendulum we live in the society that we're either all the way left or all the way right or we're plant-based or we only eat meat and it's like it's crazy and then you look at this guy liver king or whatever that dude was that was like super jacked and he, he would just eat like raw liver but you know didn't tell anybody who's shooting up uh you know all kinds <laughs> of steroids but that's a whole nother story so it's like what do you believe and i mean there's so many different narratives out there i think that each person has to take the time to figure out what's best for themselves but really have an open mind to listen and then just make your own decisions and so i think that's why i'm really excited to hear from matt tack from nutritious to come on tonight because there's going to be a lot of conversation i think around this topic for months to years i mean this is where everybody's heading is nutrition and health so i'm excited to have him on let's bring him on what up matt where you at boy matt, what's mother up, man? fucking tack there he is what's going on fellas are you getting some amino acids like what's happening we're, right now we're just gonna get no, started with him <laughs> some uh some good old uh italian <laughs> sparkling water man i love it what's up matt so, so I'm, I'm i'm cuff c diddy cuff this is my boy ap american pharaoh you obviously know bobby we call him <laughs> bobby digital <laughs> <laughs> so hey i want to get right into it man so i i i want to talk about this new tropics thing like i'm pretty into you know health uh, but, uh nobody else on this is but i'm you know i try to do a plant-based thing <laughs> <laughs> uh, even though I'm not perfect, but I'm like 98% plant based most of, most of the time. But I bet you these guys don't even know what a nootropic is. Uh, it's a tropic yeah. that's new. Who no, is it? No. You haven't. Which, who's in LA? Which is that? Is LA. that you, Cuff? Yeah. You're in LA. That's yeah. why you know what nootropics are, man. That's uh, right. Yeah, nootropics. I mean, at the end of the day, they're smart drugs, you know? So they can be a various things, right? They can be the psychedelic side or they can be the plant-based side. I mean, mainly nootropics, they're, they're across the board. They're just anti-inflammatories and they mainly focus on the brain, right? Uh, so yeah. mushrooms have gotten a really, really big name in the nootropic kind of field. Lion's mane specifically uh, is like a big one. So... You know, I am not like plant based. Uh, I man, I it's hard. That's hard. I I get a ton of protein in my diet. I'm actually carb cycling right now, so it's all meat. Um, but nootropics specifically, if we're going to be focusing on like that element of nootropics, you know, the clean version is um, the clean version is the mushroom, right? The lion's mane. But you know, what's pretty cool. It's wild is that nicotine is a nootropic as well. So like, okay, you, but only, you know, those only like, in the beginning, like it's only good, like for the first like few, but once you get hooked on nicotine, it, it works less. It like, that's what they do in college. Like people used to smoke cigarettes to like help them study. Um, but yeah, I'm you kind of lose out, you kind of lose out that like short term memory burst, but yeah. So for everybody who's listening nootropic is a smart drug. And a lot of the, the ones that we prescribe in Western medicine, the most popular is Adderall, you know, uh, caffeine's also a nootropic drug. Uh, L-theanine is an amino acid that a lot of us take to help, um, 
with with memory but so nootropic that's what nootropics are so you're going over some of the natural stuff so yeah I, I think most of the most of the benefits are in memory and like focus and attention at least that's that's kind of what I get and I try to do the lion's mane you know we're from LA we're all about this natural stuff <laughs> so how did you so what's what's the interest in nootropics how did you get involved in this like is it like a, a college thing is it your major like what's up no it's actually I got it from my trainer so that's how the the evolution of the brand actually came about was my trainer was like super into nootropics. Um, and he's the one who kind of like, he's like, Hey man, this is something that, that I'm doing it doing. So he actually got me uh, into just st getting a little bit more into like the nutritional side of everything specifically. And then nootropics being an element of that. Um, and so it was my trainer, though. I so I'm a big kettlebell guy. Uh, so I work out with kettlebells about three days a week with a trainer. Uh, and so that that's really what transpired out of it all. Uh, he was educating me through that process, and then we came together and uh, really divulged more more into the mushroom side of things um, than anything else. But you know, as you mentioned, there's so many different forms of what you know the term that kind of fall under the umbrella of nootropics. So let's go back a second, Matt. Now you've kind of told us like where this came from with nootropics and everything, but go back because I know you have a history with Bobby. You grew up with together, and then it sounds like you're kind of went in a bunch of different directions. Then all of a sudden, found this direction. So like, let's let's start there. Yeah, man. Well, so I was uh, I played ball. I think against Bobby for a while. Uh, he dominated said ball. Like Started dominated. Around. Can he ball? <laughs> because he says he can ball. He he calls himself like Bobby Crossover or something like that. Or Bobby <laughs> he, sends Crossover videos, or he sends us videos of like when he scores points and stuff to prove that he's a basketball player. <laughs> it, it looks like it's in slow motion, but I mean, he, he might hoop a little bit. I'm just curious. I mean, start there. Can yeah, he, he, we hooped. Uh, man, I, it, it, I he went to Eisenhower. I went to Stevenson. So we went to... Uh, competing high schools. And then I went to Oakland University. I had actually a walk-on opportunity at Oakland University, didn't take it, and uh, played intramural basketball. And that's where Bobby and I teamed up. So I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty sure Bobby and I were on the same team, but we just uh, we ran uh, the, the intramural at Oakland University uh, for a while. So I was, during that time, I was, I've always been into training and weightlifting. Uh, so that was like a big thing for me as like an outlet. Um, I, I just have like, I've always done it. It's how, you know, health and wellness fitness has just been part of my repertoire, part of my lifestyle. Um, so I remember just being down at Oakland and then would come out and just ball all the time. So that's, that's kind of the story. I, w I moved to Washington DC for a while. Um, I was actually doing a personal training in the morning. I'd wake up at like four or 5 a.m., train a couple executives. And then I worked for a Fortune 50 uh, company in DC after college. And then um, I got into real estate. So we moved from DC to Tampa. I got into real estate, which I still am in real estate. So I do real estate. I'm a real estate investor. Um, but my passion has always been health, wellness. Um, and so... Two years ago, uh, I actually met a chiropractor, um, really good buddy of mine, uh, has transitioned to be a really, really good friend of mine now and now a business partner. So I invested into his practice um, and we kind of collectively run the supplement side as well as uh, health and wellness. So he's a functional wellness doctor. So I, I kind of do both. Uh, I definitely still am in the real estate world. I, I, I enjoy that piece, but Health and wellness is kind of like my main gig. We're getting all this off uh, the e-commerce side. So talk to us about like, I know we, we kind of just hit on maybe some high yield topics already, but kind of like get to the dirty of like, how does it work and why should we all be doing this? It seems like the more you look around, you see all these types of things happening with how to take care of yourself. It started almost like, Oh, we got to, you know, we got to meditate. We got to do this. Now it's like, it's, it's like full health, like makeover, which I think is great. So like throw the nootropic stuff at us. Yeah. So, you know, I like keeping things super simple at the end of the day. 
I, I do. I have a cold plunge. Like we have a facility at our chiropractic uh, wellness. So like we have a cold plunge and infrared sauna there. Um, you got to be my friend. So you, you don't all partake. In- you got to come to LA. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do cold plunge like a couple of times a week, like for the dopamine surge. That's legit. And I, I'm, I'm low key thinking it's about legit. getting like a ice, like a ice thing in my gym to do it a little colder. Cause I could only do the cold plunge at certain times of the year when my co- my pool is cold enough. And then I, I, I heat my jacuzzi. So I kind of do it like that right now, but that's legit. Sorry to interrupt, but that just kind of made me excited because <laughs> It does. Does it get that? Does it get that cold in LA? Can you? So, does it yeah, get so like? Like I get my my pool can be like forty five degrees, and then I'll do the jacuzzi one hundred three. So it's kind of like a ghetto cold plunge. But I used to go to this yeah. place uh, <laughs> called Pause, and like they'd have the ice bath, and I'd hit it. I'd stay in the sauna and get real sweaty, and then go do the ice like for like a minute or yeah. two, and then go back and forth. Um, but dude. I mean, the way that like you kind of feel like high when you get out of that, like you feel so good, 100%. and then and then like you get addicted to the cold plunge. The, yeah. That's a real thing. That's such a real thing. So, and I, I, you know, I always use myself as the guinea pig on whatever I do. Um, so, like, I even got super nerdy with the cold plunge, where I would actually cold plunge before I worked out, right? So I'd get my body in a subthermal state, and then I would go to the gym. Uh, that's next level. You do have to be careful when you do that. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting, but you know, at the end of the day, like that is a big thing where, all right, what do you do? Like when there's so much information, it's like social media, like, what do I do? Like it, nootropics, like what nootropics, uh, what supplementation should I take? All these things hit you. And then should I be cold with plunging? Well, should I not be, you know, there's so much information behind that too where i've like reduced i do get a high on you know the cold plunge but i've reduced it because one of the big things for me and i I could get nerdy on this all day is uh you know last year i was really big on getting my body in a state of autophagy do you guys know what autophagy is no but i want to hear an explanation yeah (laughs) so like autophagy is pretty interesting because that's like so it's your body basically allowing your body to be hungry long enough, almost like in a fasted state where you're like turning over the, the, um, the cellular reproduction, right? So like as you age, the kind of the madness behind autophagy is that if you can, the longer you can keep your body in a state of fasting, the, 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 basically the more cells you can regenerate, right? And so like, your dead cells become more thriving. And so I was like on this big nerdy kick to like maintain autophagy. But what I found was, man, you lose a lot of muscle mass when you are in a fasted state a lot. So I was doing like 16 hours um, of like time restricted eating every single day. And then I would do one day a week where I would do like a 24 hour fast and I lost a lot of muscle mass. So like so now I've, I've, this year I've beefed up a little bit, but this, this is where it really comes back down to. And this, I try to keep it simple for everyone is yeah, I, I love putting like some mushroom in my coffee. I love, I love, uh, taking proteins that have like, I'll throw a little bit of lion's mane powder in there. Um, but this is the big thing is like, I always measure my health on my energy output. Like how much energy am I putting out every day and how much am I consuming? If I'm consuming more than I'm putting out, then there's a de- there's a delta there, and then that's not going to work well for me in the long run in terms of longevity. And so, with like even with our pouches and then the the gummies that we're coming out with, our main thing behind like we're, what we're working on right now because we're building out an app where we can get funnel guys in where we can give them really efficient workouts is that component, right? We want to make sure you're like living a really active lifestyle and then you're, you're elevating. And how, how is that? Right. And so for me, it's like, I want to make sure that my energy is definitely, I'm putting out more than I'm taking in and, uh, and living just a super healthy lifestyle. So I manage that through just like highly efficient workouts throughout the week. Um, the nutritional side yet I do clean. I, I definitely eat clean. Um, 
But you know, there's occasional throw. I'll throw in some ice cream every once in a while in there. You gotta but live. Bro. Nootropics are just a small repertoire <laughs> in terms of like supplementation. Yeah. So I love the I love nootropics. It is definitely. I our model is fuel your brain, fuel your body. So if you're fueling your brain with good stuff, meaning like the smart drugs, those the food groups that are going to be anti-inflammatory f- for the brain, and that's mainly nootropics. Um, and then what is fueling your body? Well, high protein, get a lot of protein in your diet so that I can have really solid output. You know, that's, I keep, I try to keep things really, really dummy down. Um, so I know, I know, I, I know what, you know, my BMR is my basal metabolic rate. So I know what I need to eat every day, um, in order to maintain right now, I'm in like a little bit of a bulking season. So Uh, I'm actually loading, so I'm eating actually quite a bit, but I'm also exercising quite a bit too. So uh, that's probably a long-winded answer, but at the end of the day, I I try to keep it super basic in terms of, you know, what my output is. I think that's good, man. Go ahead. uh, What's the hardest thing for you, like when you're training somebody or talking to somebody? I mean, for you to eat clean, to do the nootropics, to, you know, go through a intermittent fast and then say, no, I'm bulking it to you. It makes sense. But you know, Bobby comes in, hasn't hooped in a few months and he's a little pudgy. And how do you get a guy like him to <laughs> buy you know, in, to, like- to turn the, to turn it around and, and, you know, tighten it up because a lot of it is mental and you feel like, God, I don't know if I can do it. That's what, that's what you're fighting yourself with. Yeah, that's huge. And really what it comes down to is, you know, for me, I always go straight into the calendar. Then it's like, what are the non-negotiables? So if like, if somebody wants it, like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to want it. Like for me, I'm over the top now. And I realize that like, I have to be like, all right, not everyone's going to be like me. Uh, Cause I definitely want to, I'm, I'm in a layer of, man, I'm going to, I'm emphasizing, like I'm doing, I'm carb cycling right now. So I'm super, super low carb, but you know, for somebody walking in, Hey, a couple months, I've let myself go a little bit. It just dials it in. All right. What are your non-negotiables? And if your non-negotiables are, um, well, I, I can give you two days a week to work out. All right. Well, how can we maximize that opportunity within those two days? And then if you're only going to give those two days, then, you know, all right, you have to really understand where your your caloric maximum is. So like we say that's your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, or you can look up your TDE. And if you know how many calories you're putting into your body, like on a day-to-day basis, which it becomes like cumbersome for some people, but if you can just cognitively, okay, I always do the rule of thumb, 80% full, right? You can typically where people go wrong is when they, snack and then they eat until they're a hundred hundred ten percent full if we can go in with the mentality of we're eating to 80 percent so like whatever we get in our dish maybe we're taking some home like when we're going out to eat but we all know what to eat it's we look at we you know when we go it, the best places are going to go into uh fresh kitchen if they have that in la cup or yeah, uh, <laughs> is that okay so Fair it's like, a, you know, like $30 cookies you that say are made heroin? of heroin. Like, no, it's called Erewhon. You can get oh, like, I thought you said heroin. Hel- no, dude, you can get like the healthiest shit there. They have like, like a, like a thing of grapes costs like 30 bucks there. And they're like organic, but it's like insane. But you know, you can get a lot of natural supplements there, like uh, ashwagandha, rhodiola, rosea, ginseng. So you get a lot of, a lot of stuff there. And I kind of see what they have. It's kind of like a whole foods on like, on like extra and then i kind of look up these um these roots and these different plants and then you find out like all these health benefits that they purportedly have so so let's talk about that a little bit because so i've been taking ashwagandha for a while Uh, ashwagandha for those who don't know it's an adaptogen and what adaptogens do is they help the body adapt to stress reportedly and they help you with anxiety so for me i like i like the way it tastes so i put it in my smoothie it makes it taste kind of cinnamony um but it does kind of feel like it kind of chills me out 
right? So I do kind of take that on a daily basis. So I've kind of like doing ashwagandha and ginkgo biloba for the brain and a lot of the other natural things that I've done. I kind of like segue into like learning all these things. You know, I have a natural medicine book where you learn about them. The problem is that there's not a lot of studies that show that this these things actually work. It's basically kind of like anecdotal like old chinese medicine or natural medicine i'm not discounting it but i think for for me like when i try to talk about it with patients especially or people like like sharif who like may not believe in it they don't really have there's no evidence to say like well there's this study that says this and a lot of doctors like rely on that stuff so how do you kind of get around that like what do you tell people like how do you get them to believe in it yeah, I mean, that's a good point. And you, you bring up really good stuff. There is actually data. So there there is science um, mm-hmm. behind a lot of these things actually is uh, being anti-inflammatory. Ashwagandha has like actually a lot of clin- clinical evidence um, for not only uh, through cancer research, but it actually uh, testosterone boosting um, research behind it. So uh, oh, Ashwagandha yeah. is like a really, really awesome nootropic um, that I think everyone should actually have within their within their repertoire. Uh, it's a great supplementation. Um, you know, th- some stuff is not going to have a lot of, you know, some st- science behind it. It is going to be old Chinese medicine. You're exactly right. Um, but majority of it actually does. There's actually quite a few uh, nootropics in terms of supplementation um, that you even mentioned that has that. Uh, other things that you can add in to, I guess you could say into the, the broader nootropic world is like uh, creatine. Creatine's uh, an element of a nootropic. Uh, enhances ATP production of mitochondria. Um, yeah, that's so like, there's a lot of But it also space. has a stimulus in the brain as well. So there's a lot of research behind um, some things that, you know, I don't, I don't, because we're coming out with a creatine gummy um, and a BCAA gummy. Um, we, we're tr- kind of transitioning into some of the gummy form um, on some of our supplementation just because it's, you know, we're going with, with what the people want and uh, yeah, people dude. like gummies. I do this green one. It's called Moringa. Moringa Super Gummy. It's like 20, 20 bucks for like six. <laughs> but like, you know, <laughs> one, there's like it's, you know, it's supposed to like give you all these like health benefits. I don't even know what it is, honestly, but I just eat one every day. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of Moringa? So Have you heard of Moringa? Yeah, yeah. Matt, when you go through this, if you think about most people like yourself that are super fit and super active, you guys are a little addictive, which is a good thing. Yeah. And the the issue that I have is like, especially with my patients and, and you know, fuck cuff. I, I do believe in all this stuff. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but the, the problem that I see is it's my weightlifters. It's my guys that are super fit. They're going to like you, you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. So you say, Hey, I'm going to need you to do this. And this next thing you know, they're like eating the mushrooms, like from their yard. It's like, dude, no, you need, it's like, slow down. We, so it's kind of nice to know that you guys are developing this uh, menu, so to speak of what they're going to need with the appropriate dosages, because how many times do, you know, a couple will agree. We see guys that are on creatine and then they're like, Oh, I, I can't have surgery because my kidneys aren't working. Like, of course they're not because you're taking way too much creatine. So, you know, what is it like? How do you get around some of those as you're training and you'll be like, look, dude, I know you want to be in the gym six times a day, but we got to slow everything down. Yeah. You know, for me, it's always it goes back to like a couple different things. I don't know. I'm like this longevity like nerd. I, I want to learn more and more about like the more longevity side. And so that's why I train for like lean muscle mass. It it is addictive though. And then there's also these guys that are just like freaking just getting, you know, they're, yeah, I'm just creatine, anything that they'll give, like, I'll take, I'll take anything that just gives me a little bit of an edge. Um, I think there's a, there's a net delta to the quality of life, right? That's what I'm talking about. Like I eat eat ice cream here and there. Um, But like for me specifically, I, I always go back and I measure, look, I, I got to measure my VO2 max. I want to make sure I have high output. And then I have a lot of, you know, I have some good muscular density. Um, so I measure it off those two things. And then, you know, and then it does come down to proper dosages. I'm not like stacking like 
you know, I absolutely like just always like bulking with uh, creatine. Um, that there's a there's a loading phase and then there's an unloading phase uh, to creatine. You don't want to be using you using it all day every day. Um, and then I, I, I think that rings true though to nootropics and a lot of supplementation, right? Your brain's your brain and your body is so smart. And so, uh, when you can kind of trigger it in different ways, yeah, there should be an unloading. There should be a period where you maybe get off ashwagandha and, and, uh, relax for a minute. You know, it's like a six week kind of thing. And then you roll off same thing with lion's mane and, and all these other adaptogens and nootropics that we just want to load in and just and take every day. Now, there's some that are a little bit different, right? You have your omegas, your B12s, like those are, you know, vitamin Ds. I, those probably are good to like throw in every day because I want to get my vitamin D side, you know, to trigger. Um, to, that, that's again, another thing that increases your testosterone levels. Uh, and, um, and just really does, almost builds up like a melatonin base too. So you can trigger better sleep. So there's, there's all, you know, we go in a variety of uh, supplementation in terms all. of, yeah, you, you, you do need, need it all. It. Nothing you're saying all. is like, oh, I don't need that. I'm like, oh, better sleep, no, more testosterone, need, yeah. feel better. My brain works. It's like, so you need it all. I think, no. I think today, today consumers want like something that's easy to take and just like a healthy juice. Right. So like, look, this is a non-alcoholic. It tastes like whiskey, but it's it's made out of reishi and lion's mane's mushrooms, and it's a it's a mocktail. So like, mocktail. not only, so this is this is like hot right now in L.A. So you know, I was really impressed uh, with the new with the nootropics, uh, the nutritious thing that you have, and it kind of yeah. is reminiscent of like a juice box. Can we can we kind of see Bobby? Can you bring up like his cool little packet that he made? So so, tell us about this. This looks cool. I kind of want to. I'm no lie. I'm gonna kind of get some. I think I I'm gonna order some daily. Yeah, they're dope. So I, yeah, we are super nerdy on these ones. These are um, we have we actually have a third one that's pretty cool too. We call it Flow. Um, that one is a an almond butter, uh, an almond butter coconut milk and cacao. Um, so it mainly so these these were built in kind of the infrastructure of getting in quick carbohydrates throughout the day. Honestly, like we always thought about the medical field. So the medical field, like a doctor, right? Like yourself, Pharaoh, you coming in and, uh, you know, you're at the surgery table and what, if I'm going to live off of five hour energies and Red Bulls just to like, kind of get me through focus, that's, that's probably not the best, you know, the best longevity tool, uh, for somebody like just overworked nurses and all these things. And so that was kind of a concept that wasn't necessarily our avatar. Cause we, we are geared towards a little bit more athletic based, right? Getting quick carbohydrates, carbo loading before maybe a run or, or a workout, but it's also getting quick carbohydrates in you that, are they then going to act as fuel, but are already broken down for you. So they're clean ingredients. So sweet potato, goji berry, tartary, and chia. And then we put lion's mane and shiitake mushroom. So shiitake is a uh, cardiovascular mushroom. And then lion's mane is more of a neural, neural component, obviously mushroom. So they just have triggered different sensations. Um, and then drive is just a, like a different flavor. So banana, acai, oats, flax. Um, so we have those carbohydrates built in and then, uh, then we put lion's mane and shiitake in there as well. So they're, you know, we always said like the baby food for adults, basically, uh, they taste a lot better. They're, you know, a little bit thicker, but they, you can operate super functional. Um, and, uh, the way, you know, the way we've kind of like strategically positioned it, uh, our marketing efforts is like transitioning from somebody like taking like simple sugars, like a goo while they're running goo's a big uh uh just a big player in the space for quick uh quick energy i guess you could say and um you know that's just the difference between a simple sugar and a uh, simple sugar and a complex sugar right simple sugars you're going to have that crash with more complex uh, uh complex carbohydrates they're going to be longer lasting slower burning um, so that you can just maintain a little bit more energy because they're obviously stored. Um, so yeah, 
that's that those are that's kind of how this i got a i got a couple boxes back here oh that you're gonna you send get... us cool do these need to be refrigerated or anything or can i throw them in my backpack no you can throw them in your backpack and i love that they're 3.2 ounces so i can take them on flights because they're at the right at the right amount <laughs> they're right at the right one dude, yeah you gotta be careful dude i don't know if you do i do chia they do a lot of mama chias they come in these little packs but if you're not used yeah. to chia you're gonna be in the bathroom a lot ap because like it's like a colonic <laughs> like it sucks all the water up and you just take bring a big it. poop <laughs> bring it you got to be regular. No, Matt, you have so much knowledge with this. And it, it, like, is the website going to have all this? Because somebody's going to listen to this and be like, dude, I have no idea what my VO2 max is. I don't know. Like, how do they get the information so that they can kind of dial in what they're going to need? We're actually doing that through the app. So what we did, we're actually transitioning a little bit. So, is so um, we're actually building out an app right now uh, that utilizes like really a hyper efficient workouts um that we're doing uh and then we program those in there and give those to people um that are that are part of the general community of nutritious and so that's really where we like we're going to add a lot of value and information is there um we are building actually uh we're actually transitioning everything to an amazon brand so actually our site's getting re-infrastructured and then everything's going to be shifted and pushed towards the Amazon. Um, so we're going to be launching on Amazon in, um, in August is our kind of go live date uh, with Amazon of getting all of our products on there. Um, so mainly, though, we're going to have a discord and it's meant to educate. Um, and yeah, we just want to like mainly, you know, nutritious at the end of the day is a lifestyle brand mm -hmm. uh, more so than anything. We want people to like think of that proactive, uh, what can I do proactively, um, from a nutritional component and then also just purely from, you know, working out longevity side. I love the logo. Thanks, man. man you know, there's a meaning behind this logo too. There's uh, so like you see the N in it, but there's hills and valleys that, you know, life is made up of hills and valleys and, but there's always an infinite peak that you're ready to climb. So that's, uh, that's kind of the meaning behind the brand, right? That's there. very, very cool. Well, can I order a hat on the? I usually wear a hat. Can I order one of those on the, on the website? Yeah, they're the actually hat. we. So this was a limited release, uh, but we, yeah, we we are gonna we uh, actually. I just got. I'm getting more in in a couple weeks, uh, so there'll be more on the website. Uh, it actually has the one thing we changed up the hats a little bit because um, we actually talked with Publix. And uh, one of their brand experts said, he's like, dude, I love the logo, but he's like, people don't, people got to know your name too. You're not, you're not Nike yet. <laughs> and so he, uh, so we put nutritious down the side of it. So it'll look dope. That's awesome, dude. So, you know, me and Sharif are in a lot of clubs and societies and, and you know, I'm always looking for a new club. I like working out too. I work out at like 5 a.m. every day. Uh, I heard you got a club. Can I, can I join this club? What's the name of your club? Are you... <laughs> it's called the Jack Dad's Club. That's my club, uh... baby. Sign me <laughs> up. I, I should be like an honorary member of that thing, bro. I'm going to send you a thirst trap picture so you know what I'm working with, okay? <laughs> Please, God, don't. Please, God, don't. I already sent it to you. You have it on your phone. Oh, I know. I know. I've seen it. <laughs> creepy as fuck so what's the club oh, about, man. Uh, dude I, I i'm just like super passionate about like the the brand and what we're working on and so i had this idea i'm like you know what i'm a dad of three girls at the end of the day too eight six and four and uh i'm like i am a girl dad but i'm not like that girl dad uh but uh, I'm like, you know what, man? I like, I'm proud of being a Jack Dad. Let's uh, let's make a club of this whole thing. <laughs> so I literally had this idea. Like it was like three weeks ago, and I'm like, let's just start posting stuff on Instagram. Like I'll post all my workouts, and so my partner and I, we just collab, man. And so we're just we like, make a we're calendar. starting the Jack we, Dad. Club. We gotta make a calendar, but I want to be May, okay? I'm gonna be May because that's my birthday. Oh, and then we'll do a uh, Jack Dad's Club calendar. 
<laughs> I love it. <laughs> so great. It'll be a fundraiser. Dude, I'm not lying. Jareef That's said, a pretty credible idea. Let's do it. Jareef said he's not included, but he's getting there. He's starting to work out, right? You getting back in it? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I'm listening to all this and it's not that I've never believed in. I always have. It's just life takes over when you got three kids. So I got 16, 14 and 11 and, you know, busy orthopedic surgeon and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not making excuses, but it's like I travel and this. And so it's like I'll work out, work out, work out, eat well, eat well, and then like fall off. So when I turned 50 last year, I was just like, you know what? Fuck this. I got to do this. I got to do it for me. I want to be around. My dad died young. So it's like, I got to be, I got to be better to myself. And so I'm listening to all this. I'm, you know, taking feverish notes and I'll probably reach out to you offline, but everything you're saying makes total sense. It's like anybody who listens to you and says that's bullshit. It's like, they're just lazy. And I hate to say that, but that's the reality. It's because you've said nothing that isn't true. Now, if you don't want to do it, that's fine. But you've said nothing that if you, if I, if I follow what you just said, I'll be a Jack dad, no doubt, but more hmm. importantly, I'll be healthy and have the longevity that I hope to have so that I can see my family grow. So I, I'm, I'm, very interested and who knows maybe 2025 i'll be a jack dad for june you know you don't know i'm getting there for 24 but by 25 i want to see that six pack again that's what i'm talking about i'm a big believer man i i I really do man once you have a six pack you ain't going back i'll tell you that much like it's like if it's an addiction but it is one of those things where I just, I think of it as life, life will absolutely take you like it'll, it'll take you. And the one thing that I did, so three years ago, um, it was a community. So like we started meeting up and we, I started doing hit training and we did kettlebells. So like we started like with kettlebell. now I'm like super into kettlebells. I, I do other things too, but that's like, that's my main mode. And it's just something I've thoroughly enjoyed, but it's a community of guys. We have about five guys that just get together and it's like clockwork. You know what I mean? It's like, it's those non-negotiables that I'm going there. It's going to be hard as shit, but we're we're meeting up, you know? And, uh, and, and like, and we meet up outside in the Florida heat in the summertime. Like there's no excuses. We're out there. Uh, And then what I started doing uh, recently is at our clinic the third Saturday of every month, I'll have people come to my clinic. We'll do a we'll do a workout, and then I'll introduce them to like infrared sauna and cold plunge. And so we've been doing that as well. Uh, but yeah, it's just it just comes down to like those non negotiables. I just I I love it. It's part of my life. It's part of my routine. And I'll be I'll be vulnerable with you guys. It's crazy. Past two weeks, right? Insane brain fog insane brain fog. I was like, what the heck is going on? Like, and, uh, there was like, you know, it's at this point where you're like getting depressed because like, it's hard to think. And you're just like, what, what is happening? Right. And, uh, I was thinking, I was like, if I hadn't maintained activity, right. Where I was like, getting myself out of breath on a daily basis. I was like, dude, I'd be in a real big hole. You know, I would, I'd be probably like, you know, this, this would probably extend out a lot further, but the fact is like, I, I just kind of like sat, you know? Uh, and I was, I just was like, you know what? I'm going to sit, I'm going to pray. I'm going to, I'm going to dig into, uh, this book. I have like this 40 day, like prayer challenge book that I was like going through. I'm just going to sit here and just like be present. But I do, I do attribute a lot that to like moving my body because if I, if I still hadn't moved my body, I, I do like if life caught me in a bad stage and I was just not moving, uh, you know, it just, you can go down that like hole so quickly. So, uh, I just, you know, that's one thing that I just have in that routine that I think is huge. And, uh, it's, it's been, it's been big. And, Another thing like that I've tapped into is, which is kind of a nootropic that we can, you know, maybe, maybe in a future podcast that we'll talk about, but peptides. Um, so we're doing peptides and TRT and those things that we're playing around with. And, uh, on our side and our coaching program is just like, though, 
that's the next evolution of like this like kind of the nootropic longevity that uh that i'm tapping into now because it is absolutely that there's so much more science behind this stuff now that is incredible well let me ask you this because you've kind of given us some a lot of information but part of it is is pretty generalized like anybody can do it yeah however i just recently took like a food sensitivity test because i a lot of it was like brain fog and all this other stuff like you were just discussing and I just didn't feel well. And so I did it. And one of the things that was interesting was I am remarkably sensitive to egg whites. And then like it was turkey and Brussels sprouts and carrots and broccoli, like things I always thought to myself, oh, those are kind of healthy. And then like it would go down. And so Although you're like listing things off, have you found that like certain ones of these, like if you if you don't tolerate this, you don't want that. You know what I mean? Is there anything that like you say, well, if you can't have this, you better not have this particular nootropic. I mean, because each of us are kind of unique. And when you hit peptides, that's really where it's each of us are going to be different. We need we need a general amount. But what cuff needs, what I need, what you need might be different peptides. Yeah, uh, on the nootropic front, yeah, there there are going to be people that that have allergies. Like you know, I think a lot of people have actually allergies to the shiitake. Um, so in terms of supplementation, certain food groups are going to be inflammatory uh, to some people, and then inflammatory to others. I think at the end of the day, uh, really, what you need to look at specifically is um, they, a lot of, a lot of inflammation can go when you do a like metabolic, just cleanse. Mm -hmm. Um, cause the whole goal is to be metabolically flexible and, in and, and, and so cleaning out that gut, uh, the gut is massive in terms of like what it can take on. But if you overindulge, that's when be, things really become inflammatory. And so, uh, Food sensitivity is good. I'm not going to lie. Um, I think you actually can work your way out of some sensitivities too. Um, when you focus on kind of get, getting that gut really clean and then, and then it becomes, how do you get your gut clean? Uh, because there's, a, there's so many different opinions on well, gut vegan. microbiome and, and what that looks like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just did it a month and a half ago and then i did that gut cleanse and i mean i took fucking are you uh, how many drops of this and how many pills of that and you know canada and you know to kill, kill all the candida in the belly and yeah. so i did that and then like super high protein diet no sugar i mean super 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 restrictive diet and i felt amazing as soon as i was done because it it made sense because, you know, my friends would always say, hey, let's go get breakfast. And then I'd be like, dude, I fucking hate breakfast. And now I get it. It was because I always felt terrible after breakfast mm -hmm. because of many of the things that I'm inflammatory to. And I'm not discounting the fact that I could probably work my way out of it, but I don't even want to because now I feel so much better knowing what I can and cannot eat. And then if I were to incorporate more stuff like nootropics and peptides, I mean, I'd probably feel great. And adding into it, working out more, it, it all of a sudden, it's like you said, it's a lifestyle that I'm going to feel good. And it's been a long time since I felt good because it was no matter how much I worked out, I was eating the stuff that was not great for me. So I never felt like the benefits of it. So now that I'm working out doing even the same workouts, but eating the stuff that works with my particular makeup, I feel amazing. You look good too. I feel yeah, like you lost a little on. weight. You lost a little weight in the face. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> you're so sweet. Dude, it's good, man. He's sure, good. You're, you're for sure coming on for another episode because I want to hear all about these peptides. I just started researching the peptides, so you're booked. Yeah, We're going to get you. You're, you're coming back. We got That's a whole episode in and of itself, uh, so you're 100%. definitely coming back for that. But before he goes, Bobby, do you want to come in? Do we have a game for Sir Matt Tack. <laughs> We're gonna play name that fucking I, root. I <laughs> name that no, root. root. <laughs> yeah, That's name ginger. that root. <laughs> oh geez, I've just been sitting back, just 
stewing because you guys called me pudgy like 30 minutes ago. I'm pissed about it still. But uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, Tech, we, we like to play a game every episode just to have fun and bullshit and have a good time. Uh, we're always changing it up a little bit. But um, what I'm going to do is we're going to travel back in time a little bit to oh, season shit. one um, with one of our original games that Cuff Daddy used to host. But we're going to put him on the hot seat now along with you guys. We're going to play Keeping It Gangster. So, Keeping It Gangster. So, tech, Keeping It Gangster is basically, uh, I'm going to show you guys a set of slang terms. And you have to try and identify what the hell it means. Um, so, Cuff Daddy here prides gonna himself <laughs> on being young and with it. With it, I think he's gonna fail miserably because he doesn't know shit. He thinks he does, but he hosts. It. He would host the segment, and he would just—he's like Alex Trebek, just having all the answers in the cards, right? So, anyways, we're gonna start. It's just gonna be first one who uh, who wants to buzz in or just say it out loud, however you guys want to go about it. But uh, first one here, we got no crumbs. No crumbs. That just means like you're clean, like you're clean cut. Oh, where's my buzzer? No crumbs. Get out of your cuff. <laughs> no crumbs means like you're, uh, that's uh, money. Like you ain't getting no, no crumbs. Nah, get out of here. All right. Well, then I'm going to throw one out there. Uh, it means you've eaten everything on your plate. That is, can you elaborate on that at all? <laughs> that's what. Uh, when you're rolling a J and there's nothing left, it's all rolled and there's, <laughs> there's no nugs that are sitting out. Stems, no seeds. Just, that's not it, but I'm going to, I'm going to give you a ding just because you were close enough. So no crumbs. Yeah. Nothing left on a plate. So it's a, uh, derivative of another slang term, um, to eat or if somebody ate. So like somebody does an exceptional job, you say they ate and left no crumbs. Ate. Come okay. on, Cuff. You that, seemed, that seemed almost too obvious. No yeah. crumbs. Okay. All I right. Don't know. Well, you want to you want to get you want to go far from the obvious. I don't even know if I'm going to pronounce this right. Chugi. 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 Wasn't he an? Chugi. Wasn't he a guest on our episode? Oh no, it was Chewy. Sorry. <laughs> Chew. Chew. I don't know these words. <laughs> Stop looking it up, dude. <laughs> He's looking down at his phone. <laughs> what does this mean? These aren't real words. Did you go on Urban Dictionary for these? You need reliable sources, Bobby. No, I've got buzz, buzz, buzz. What is You're it? Out of here! I'm thinking, Chugi. It's uh, it's cringy or awkward, specifically in reference to the early and mid two thousands. That Chugi. That never Chugi. heard that in my life. <laughs> See, Cuff, you sucked at hosting this game. Everybody got all yours right. <laughs> He didn't even know where to put the apostrophes, if you recall. (laughs) (laughs) All right, this one, this one's easier. You guys should be able to get this one. You got Delulu. Delulu. You're delusioned. That's like dope. You're tripping. That's Delulu. You're delusional. That one, I would say that one goes to cuff on that one. It's just shorthand (laughs) for delusional. There you go. You're picking up some steam. Uh, All right. That's cap, bro. Come on, Tack. You got this one. Shut up, slime. All right, let's go. Uh, Gassin. Easy. I'm not going to say that one. No, go ahead, buddy. No, if you got it, go ahead, Cuff. You got that? Like, you're, you're, you're gassing. That means, like, like you're, you're, like, getting tired and shit. <laughs> or you're gassing so them up. Or confidence. it could be you're gassing them up. Like, yeah, you're, you're, like, pumping them up, yep. too. Yes, I mean, it could be right one of the yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically... Hey, the- Cuff is amazing at this game. He is so good at everything he does. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Mr. 99th percentile, right? Yeah, That's Mr. 99th right. percentile. We're gassing him up. We should have so played Name That Fucking Root. Exact... <laughs> yeah. right, next time we'll find it. I feel like Matt would have been all over that. Like, what, name what's that the mushroom. name of the root? Name, name that, that mushroom. Root. <laughs> okay, okay, when you come back, we'll out there. Burdock Root. Oh, shit. <laughs> Rhubarb. Uh, all right, we're going next one. We got Menti B. Menti Sounds B. Like a, Sounds like a drug. Sounds like you meant to say 
You meant it, B. Meant to be. It's like a menthol. It's like a menthol, like a menthol thing that they chew in their lip. Uh, I've been hitting this buzzer so many times. I don't want to keep doing it. It's going to annoy me. Like when you're driving, people are going to be like veering off the road with all these buzzers. <laughs> meant to be. So, uh, so it's meant to be. That's what I was saying. Oh, is that what you yeah. said? Yeah, but it's not it. No, nope, no, nope. it's uh, it's short for mental breakdown. M- oh TV. shit! I'm Popular. having a men TV right now. I thought Cuff, I thought Cuff was going to get it because it uh, apparently was made popular on Love Island, and I know you love your reality shows. So. <laughs> I feel like well, your I feel like I aged little, out. Your microphone's having a men TV tonight, Bobby. Yeah. Is it? Am I breaking up? A little bit. Yeah. Whatever. I don't <laughs> care. You guys are the stars. So. <laughs> All right, one. Let's see if we get this one. Beige flag. Bit days for, bro. <laughs> you know this one, Cop? No, dude, do it, Cop. Is it these is the base? These are real. <laughs> is that what's behind them? Nobody talks like that, Bobby. <laughs> oh, this is what the like what the youth is talking about. Get with it, Cop. It's Maltese thugs. Older. Maltese thugs speak like this. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. So you got, you got your red flags. Obviously that's, that's easy to figure out. Beige flag is literally, um, it's a characteristic that's quirky, neutral. It's not positive or negative. So it's like cuff saying, what up, what up, what up, what up? It's just a quirky characteristic that somebody has. That's endearing. Beige flag. Hmm. See, you're going to start using it now. I might use it tomorrow. No, I, I still don't think I could use that in a sentence. Like your uh, man button has a beige flag. It's just his. It's just endearing. It's just, it doesn't do shit. It's just a fucking man bun. All right. We suck. Matt, you're Beige fucking time. awesome. I like you. We're best friends now. Uh, you're down to come on my show, on our show. <laughs> Whatever you want. But, dude, I appreciate yeah, man, you coming I agree. on. I agree. You're awesome. Guys, thanks for having me on, man. Really enjoyed it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, man, let's, uh, let's, I'll get on again, man. We'll talk about some peptides. We'll talk about whatever you guys want. Oh, the, the game's got to get better though. I'm horrible at keeping a gangster. Right, we're we're yeah. playing we'll, we'll, we'll name that root next time. Name that yeah, root. Name sure. that root. I'll be prepared. <laughs> All right. Send us a bunch of free shit and we'll keep talking about this on the podcast. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. When I get some hats in, I'll get them to you guys. Done. All right. Take All it right, easy, Matt. All right, Cuff. All right. Later, bro. Bobby. Keep it real. Later, Tech. See you, man. I guess. Dude, he's cool as shit. I like him. I like that guy, dude. And that that guy was taught. That guy needs to live in L.A. I mean, that he's literally yes. like my next door neighbor. Like, that's all people talk about around here is like natural healing and all this workout stuff. So, how does that work for your job? Like, you'd be like, "I'm going to operate on you," and they're like, "Why would you operate on me?" In in Calabasas. Guy comes in, says, I have a rotator cuff tear. You're like, I'll operate on you. He's like, fuck that. I want to take a nootropic or a, a this or a that. I want to go. Can I can I eat something at Whole Foods and, and heal my rotator cuff tear? So I actually would talk to that patient about nutritional supplementation, but that's another episode. That is another episode. I'm looking forward to that one. Because we're like so, the bloods yes. and the crypts of, of surgical nutrition. That's right. But I like it. <laughs> yeah, but dude, that was super informative. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the show, knew what the hell we were talking about. But this is pretty much a wellness episode if you didn't get it by now. And hopefully you picked up some names of some cool mushrooms and some herbal products that can help your brain and your cognitive function. But it's your boy Cuff Daddy, and it's time to bounce. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Peace. And it's your boy, American Pharaoh. And find us wherever you find your socials. And also now find us on our YouTube channel where you can watch us and not just listen to what? us. What? 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 So, in the famous way, Cuff Daddy starts a show. What up? What up? What up? What up? Peace. Trying to get a lot of dough. Anything is possible. Turn me up in the headphone. Yeah.
Grind it, get a lot of dough and dirt the water obstacles, cause anything is possible. Yeah. Oh man, I got a lot of gold. Stack that bread and vomit nose. Anything is possible. Yeah. 